Hello, I am Filipa Serra Gaspar, and this is SEO in 2024. Filipa, what's your number one SEO tip for 2024? So my number one uh, SEO tip for 2024 would be to really always have it, E-E-A-T, on the back of your mind every time you are creating a new page or uh, any content that you really want to rank on on Google or any other search engine. Okay, um, so have that on the top of your mind. So I guess the place to start with that is the first part of it, which, which is experience. So how, how do you demonstrate experience? Yes, uh, well, that is, well, hard and easy to reply to, I guess. Definitely, you can demonstrate your uh, experiences by giving uh, somehow uh, first-hand experiences or personal experiences. Of course, that this is something that really humanizes the content, really humanizes what you are writing. And if you have an experiences, it really means that you are writing from, you know, your own experiences, of course. And then you can also provide, if it's necessary, I don't know, case studies for, for instance, give, yeah, examples of a situation that, that you lived or something that really, you know, is somehow different from all the other content that you can find online. In the end, it tends to be something very like specific and very like, concrete, I would say. Not all times, but it's a very good way to demonstrate it. Okay, so you just think of yourself personally and what you've done personally, but should you not be thinking about search engines and um, what search engines may find interesting or relevant in relation to yourself and your brand and also think about search, um, well, users themselves as well, or is it only just about um, what you do? Yeah, of course, we always need to have the search engines as well on the back of our mind. I guess it is a little bit of both. It is not only, yeah, maybe I mentioned a lot the personal experience, but it's not only about the personal experience. You can also use uh, other examples such as you can link, uh, you can citate other sources. You can perhaps write something that is not a personal experience, but then use, for example, a author bio where, okay, it explains that there is someone behind of what you are writing. So yeah, it doesn't necessarily need, need to be personal experience because it's not always possible as well but I guess it is a bit of a mix of of both in the end it is very very hard to measure it is also very somehow subjective so it is a bit of of both (laughs) I would say but in the end if you have a quality content and people go to you of course that search engines will pick up on that and they will see that it's helpful that the content is good and as a consequence you will also rank and you will gain uh, visibility. So one thing that you touched upon there was citing credible sources. So how do you go about selecting the right sources to be citing and then how do you go about doing that? Yes, that perhaps can be websites with a lot of uh, authority or sources with a lot of authority already in general depends really on the topic that we are talking about but it could be, if that's the case, I don't know, worldwide organization or it really depends on the topic, of course, but usually sources that really give credibility to you. So organizations that usually are well known for their expertise. So also mention experts on, on the area that you are um, talking about on that. And it's, um, I'm sure it's the case that it's difficult to make that choice of which source to use because there are probably thousands of websites that you could actually choose from in relation to your industry. Um, So are there any particular tools that you use to select the optimum resources to to, to link to? Um, I mean, mean, do you go for the highest possible, you know, link authority? Do you go for the highest possible relevance? I mean, what, what, what metrics do you use to choose those resources and um, how, do you, how do you find them? Hmm. Again, it depends. <laughs> but, uh, I'm just thinking about examples of perhaps works that I've done before. And I would say the criteria is not always the same uh, because, of course, for some industries, you might find a lot of information online. For some others, not so many. So it really depends on the industry. I could not really give you a straightforward answer, 
Are you able to give some 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 example without without sharing a brand if you don't want to? But I mean, some example of an industry and how it would work. I don't know, for example, if it's something related, I mean, this is a very easy one, but for example, it's something related to health. For example, you can mention the, um, I forgot how it's called, the, the World <laughs> a Health Organization. I could only think about it in my native language. Sorry. Yeah. So for example, if it's a health related topic, for instance, you can mention sources like that. For example, if you are talking about uh, an industry like the pets industry, you can mention the, I don't know, Vets Association, or you can even cite some sort of uh, specialist on the field, uh, for instance. So that's great advice. Um, so basically, you're not talking about finding um, the most authoritative commerce websites in, the, in that particular sector. Uh, you're probably more referring to industry trade bodies that you can refer to, to 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 demonstrate that you 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 trust what they're saying and you 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 recommend your readers go and check them out yes i uh, yeah that's that's what i would say yes okay superb okay and um a lot about what you produce needs to be high quality of course to appeal to users and search engines as well so as well as the experience as well what demonstrates um that you are sharing high quality information. Uh, is there a certain structure or writing style that you advise people to write in nowadays? Well, I mean, to start off with, uh, not really related to the content, but yeah, kind of, I kind of mentioned it before with Peter really, whenever there is an article where you really want to have, you know, uh, experience, expertise on then always link back mm -hmm. to the author bio, for instance. Uh, so that already gives quite a lot of credibility. And then in terms of structure, again, I don't really have a formula as, again, it varies a lot. But for example, uh, you can also refer to data, statistics, case studies of, you know, studies, again, that have been done before on that matter, on that subject. And again, that, of course, are uh, trustworthy uh, sources. Um, that's very, very important. And somehow, or if it's possible, you can also use some kind of a social proof. You can also use perhaps reviews from other people if, if it's possible or some sort of like trustworthy user generated content really depends on the field again as well. And, uh, yeah. And if you want to mention examples, really demonstrate what they are about, like things that you can demonstrate somehow. But I wouldn't say that there is, yeah, structure or formula to follow because, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be able to come up with it, really. It, it varies. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but, but you gave some tips there that um, are worthwhile diving into a little bit um, more. And one of your first ones was the author bio as well, or the author link. Um, so are you talking about um, within a blog, on a corporate website, on a business website, having a short author bio at the bottom of each article or l linking to an author page? And well, what's the optimum way to set that up? I mean, again, this should be on obviously like content matters. For example, I don't know if it's e-commerce and it's a product, it obviously doesn't make sense to, to refer to the author in case there is a uh, content, of course. Yes, I would say just a place or a URL or a page where you can actually find the information about that author and then all the articles that this, that person has, has written. For example, I was just checking some articles like last week where a lot of people were mentioning that how the New York Times, for instance, is uh, structuring their author bios, where you can find a lot of information, not only about the author, but also like what do they usually cover, what are the journalistic ethics, their background, and sometimes you can even contact them. I, I, and and would that be within each article that they're publishing, or do you have to click through a link to a specific author page in order to find that? So there's like a, a little um, description, and then you can click and find out more information. Okay, so key absolutely to to expand your author pages to incorporate the elements that the author normally writes in, and I guess links to the author's other platforms and perhaps social me media profiles as well. Yes, if that also gives you, if, if yeah, if the author is uh, active on yeah some kind of a social proof where you can yeah also find I don't know an address or, or you know 
phone number or someone that you can probably not directly to the author, but you know, some institution that represents them and that it's really like constant. For example, in this case, yeah, I mean, if it's a media outlet and you know that you can refer back to the website, to the media outlet itself, for instance, yeah. And you touched upon social proof, user-generated content as well. How do you go about um, incorporating that content into your page? Uh, is it worthwhile doing that on every single page? Are there only certain types of pages, certain types of pieces of content that you would recommend to have that on? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend having in all of them. Usually, I would say topics where the users can really know, maybe if they have questions and then people can probably have answers to them or if possible, not always, but if they can interact with the author, for instance, for more questions. Uh, so that really gives, gives it a lot of, you know, authority, humanizes it a lot. There's someone behind it that actually is reading you, is getting back to you. In case of reviews, also reply uh, to the reviews of, of, of what your customers or users are, are giving you on your, on your website. Okay, okay. So it's so almost um, a category of a, an FEQ section um, w within a piece of content to, to answer the questions that people would commonly have as, as follow-on pieces in relation to your article. Yes, if, if possible and if it makes sense, I think it's a great practice, definitely. Of course, it, it has to be, you know, somehow monitored to make sure, I don't know, there is no spammy content or something like that. But uh, if it's a really uh, productive or, you know, something that really brings value, I think it's a great, a great practice. It can even probably give you ideas of something new to write. So if you're writing about a certain topic and then there's a user that comes up with a question that you did not reply on that article, then it's probably even idea to come up next or to include on your content planning in the future. Okay. Or, or, or to enhance the article uh, in the future. Also. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you also talk about transparency. So from what perspective are you talking about transparency? Are you, are you talking about your perhaps um, relationships with, um, with, with providers so that you're not necessarily completely neutral on a particular topic? Or are you talking about something else there? Well, if it's, for example, well, if it's providers, I guess this would work more on like uh, e-commerce. I guess, yeah, in that case, it can also be beneficial because I don't know, sometimes people really want to know where do your products come from, you know, who produces, produces them, sorry. Understood. So supplier chains and things like that. Yes. And also uh, on terms of, well, can be on that and also on the author, for instance, that there is a face, a name uh, behind it. So it works for both sides, really. Yes. So yeah, if the user wants to know more information that, you know, it's, it is available and they can really know what they are consuming. Uh, if the information is like, I don't know, bias, or if it comes from a certain ideology that the user should also know and should also be aware of what they are, you know, reading if that's, yeah. So would you ever use AI to produce content and, and can AI produced content actually demonstrate it? <laughs> I mean, it can demonstrate it with, without the experience, I guess. I guess. So the old it, <laughs> but I would say that no, AI cannot have the, the experience. I, I think AI is great, but of course, Google recommends that we always have like a human check, so like a fact checking. So it can be a very helpful tool. But it should always have somehow a human fact checking and a human last, yeah, proofreading. What, what can really uh, differentiate content that comes from AI and content that comes from a human is the experience. So AI content cannot have that experience because AI is, yeah, is not a livable. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, no, that that is something important to emphasize. Um, so. If an SEO decided that um, AI produced content is too good to an opportunity to miss out on and they, they, they want to use AI produced content, then at, at least embellish it with experience to try and show that uh, an individual is, um, is producing it as opposed to AI. I mean, I guess it can be, it, it is possible if you work together with AI, so a human plus AI, <laughs> in that case, maybe you can have a bit of experience there as well, uh, of course. 
because or you can even have like, I don't know, a 50-50 article. And in that case, uh, you can have the AI part and then also the human side of it. But if the article is 100% AI, then it cannot have the, the experience experience side. That's That's for sure. If an SEO is struggling for time, what should they stop doing right now so they can spend more time doing what you suggest in 2024? Yes. So, I mean, as I was saying, that uh, AI content does not have that uh, experience part, so it does not really go within all of that EEAT uh, rules. I would really say that, you know, make content for people and not for, for robots or not for the algorithm. Really, like, make content for humans and in the end, it will be visible that you will have more visibility. It'll be more successful. Yeah. Successful. Your ratings will improve. Uh, and then, you know, everything that comes after it. Again, AI is great, but uh, if you really want to depreciate yourself, I think the human side can play a big, a big part and can be really good for your SEO strategy. Ulipa Sarah Gasper is an SEO consultant. You can find her over at seolipa.com. Philippa, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2024. Thank you. I've been your host, David Bain. Get your copy of SEO in 2024, the book, over at seoin2024.com. <laughs>